are you still interested in a little bit more or yeah sure want to i i would sure? also have have like a, a question um like oh I don't know yeah if, yeah please please like, ask lots of um <laughs> to like i don't know if we can generalize it but could we say that when we have like a, a upward trend market so like a, a bull market um that we're actually like it makes more sense to long on this one to trade longs and if we're in a bear market it makes more sense to trade shorts or could you not generalize that yes you're right the problem is how do you know we're in a bear market <laughs> Or in a yeah, that's market. that's a good question. <laughs> well, actually, it's not that easy to determine, right? Mm -hmm. So, so one way people determine whether we're in a bull or in a bear market is, in fact, exactly what we've done here, that moving average thing. Mm -hmm. So, if we are below that moving average with our price, we're in a bear market. Mm -hmm. If we are above, we're in a bull market. But then you get these buy the dip moments, you know, mm -hmm. where the mm -hmm. market just dips like here and here what do you do there are we really in a bull market or not mm, yeah, um, i get your point mm -hmm. one thing we could say is well if we if we are longer than a certain period of time in that dip and um, we're in a bear market but mm -hmm. but actually even that isn't really correct because mm -mm. here we're already for a while in that yeah. but then it comes back but then if we're even longer in that market we may already miss mm -hmm. A lot of the bear market yeah. with the shorts no, so sense. it's actually really hard to determine <laughs> and if you can do that you could make billions <laughs> <laughs> it, it is in fact difficult um so you got to be really aware of that mm -hmm. now there's also some other things you know like like with our strategies that you know, you've already seen what I did here when I changed my parameters, you know, my mm -hmm. input parameters. So one of the things you can do, for example, is, um, you know, at what you call a parameter optimization. So you could go, okay, instead of 200, you may just use 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you run the back test again and see if it gives you better results. Mm -hmm. um, and Actually, when you go to 100, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Uh huh. Yeah. Interesting, huh? So you go, oh, 100 is terrible. You know, we don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, what about 250? Um, so we go to 250. And yeah, we get a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, one of the issues here is if you play too much with these parameters, that's what's called overfitting. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing here then is we're actually fitting our backtest to our data. And while this gives us really great backtests, it doesn't help us much yeah. going forward. Yeah, yeah? true. So we're going to discuss this in much, much detail later on how we prevent this because it's actually really, really easy to overfit. And it's really, really easy. You know, that look ahead bias that I told you before, yeah. where we get a knowledge of what we're doing mm -hmm. already. And then accordingly, we build our strategy, which we shouldn't do. These are really big problems when we build trading strategies. And often we, we can make these amazing back tests as soon as we go live. It's absolute terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we really want to avoid that. And for now, all I want you to do is to be aware of it. Uh, we can't. We're not quite there yet, where we can yeah. talk about how to avoid this. <laughs> There's quite a few more things mm -hmm. that will come our way, but um, that's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there's another thing that that uh, I want, and this is this is something practical. Can you see here we? When we run this, right, here, you know, we, 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 we basically look, we make a nice profit here, yeah? But in between this trading, right, the market just goes like doo -doo -doo -doo, up and down, up and down, you know? So 
what we see here is only the profits that we make at the end of the trade. Yeah. But what we don't see is what, what happens if we make this trade and the market goes like almost to zero and then comes back. And so we get like a massive stomach ulcer here before we're actually making money. You know, this chart doesn't tell us this. And so there is an interesting distinction between what you call the realized and the unrealized returns. Okay. <laughs> So when you make money at the end of the trade, that's what you call a realized return because you realize your return, it becomes real, yeah? But what happens if the market in the intermediate time actually dips a lot more and then comes back? We don't see that in that chart here. And so that's what's called the unrealized return. And actually, when we assess trading strategies, most of the time, we are not really looking at the realized return we're looking at the unrealized returns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is really important because often the unrealized returns, they can look a lot different from the realized returns. <laughs> <laughs>